outer space. We're going there right now on this week's Jagging Around. Sort of. You know, not many people thank COVID for anybody, for anything. <laughs> yeah. So we will thank COVID and quarantining because we've learned how to work Zoom for our Jagging Around videos. Yeah. And here we are today with Dr. Hoberg, who is uh, otherwise known as, you know, if he was in Pittsburgh hanging out at Permanis, they'd call him Woody. Yeah, we'd be like, what up, Woody? But what? not right now. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> and he is a North Allegheny um, yeah. a graduate and has been just uh, announced as part of the the new astronaut class. Welcome to the Jagoff team, Dr. Hober. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. Great to be with you. Anytime we interview folks who are from Pittsburgh and move on, it's never been this far gone like space. <laughs> what what has it been like as far as a journey for you? Because let's face it, this is sometimes a childhood dream where people say, "Oh, first thing I think of is I want to be an astronaut." Is that is that the fairy tale start? Yeah, it definitely uh, crossed my mind through, uh, through the years that I might like to be an astronaut. I think it combined for me kind of uh, really technical problems. I, I was interested as an engineer in like solving hard problems, but I also have always been uh, really excited by kind of operational stuff like flying, search and rescue. And I always thought of this job as something that would combine those really nicely. Um, it also felt impossible. <laughs> so, I did. I think I, I never got my heart set on it and I always had other things that I, I was interested in doing and uh, um, yeah, it just, it, it always felt impossible, but it, it apparently is possible. <laughs> so here I am. Well, and John actually was super prepared because as uh, we're not kidding, he really is fanboying. Not that I'm not, but he is so into the whole you know, space and, and things like that. But he pulled up a statistic. Over yeah. 1 million high school football players in the United States, 6.5% of them go to any type of college to play football. 1.2% of those college level players ever make it to the NFL. Over 4,000 people apply to become an astronaut in 20 slots every two years come open. So that's crazy. So you could have made it to the NFL a whole lot easier <laughs> than becoming an astronaut. That's the moral to that story. You could have been a stiller, but you went with this. <laughs> I might be the one person that would be more likely to be here than uh, than make it to the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's crazy. I don't think anyone, we all, as you said, it's, it's this, you think it's an unattainable goal, you know, or something you say as a kid, but as you grow and, and go, okay, I'm really not going to be an astronaut. But that statistic is is crazy. Did you, were you aware of that? I mean, is, does it feel that cutthroat, so to speak, through the application process? Yeah, I think one thing during the application process that was um, telling for me, I mean, you come down here, I, I'm sitting here at Johnson Space Center. Um, this is also where we apply um, and go through that application process. It's a, it's a couple uh, roughly week long in-person interviews. And through that process, you meet many of the other people applying for the job that have made it pretty far into the process. And one of the humbling things about that experience is, I mean, when I was in my final round interview group, I was looking around saying, wow, why, first of all, why am I here? <laughs> These people are amazing. And number two, anyone here could easily get this job and be great at it. And so there is a certain, I think, element of just luck involved, um, but yes, you, you really do get a sense for um, just all these amazing people um, that could could easily do this job. So it makes me feel very lucky to get to be here. See, he's so down to earth. It is. So I know. I keep saying down to earth. It's not being funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to be funny. Rachel talked about the grueling process, but what is the process? I mean, this Absolutely. isn't something you just get online and put up your resume and say, "Hey, here's my picture in front of the Earth. I'd like to be an astronaut." You know, it's funny you say that because the start of the application process is actually, a, it, there's no picture, but it's it's other than that, exactly what you just said. So, okay. um, I mean, no joke, I, uh, I was working uh, as a professor at the time. Um, I was actually at a rock climbing gym with a buddy. And he's the one that even, I mean, I had no, I was not even aware that NASA was hiring astronauts at the time. But he had read a news story that NASA was hiring astronauts. Um, so that was what made me aware. And, and I said, OK, but uh, he and I kind of agreed, like, let's apply. Um, and it turns out the application process, you go to usajobs.gov um, and you literally fill out an online resume. 
and press submit. Um, and that's it. Wow. And um, and then you kind of you wait around long enough to think that maybe your application got forgotten about or, or dropped by the system somehow. Um, and just when I had kind of forgotten about the whole thing, I, I got an email saying we'd like to have you down here for an in-person interview. You know, as a mom, what was the uh, overall kind of excitement or reaction from your family or from here in Pittsburgh? What was it like? Like, my boy, right? Yeah, it, um, I mean, my parents have always been very supportive with all my crazy hobbies and weird things, and and this was no exception. They uh, they're super supportive of it. Um, my brother is still in Pittsburgh. He's a, a high school chemistry teacher at Upper St. Clair. Okay. Um, and also coaches uh, NA girls volleyball. Oh wow! So, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you, I you know, Rachel's back. sitting on her hands right yeah, now. Yeah, we won't talk about sports. Hill remember? Sports Allegheny. She's okay. Saying... Okay. All right. I'll, that that will be my only faux pas. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, everybody's super supportive, and uh, I I feel yeah really lucky about that. At what point did you shake the accent? I don't hear any Pittsburghy. <laughs> well, so I went from Pittsburgh to Boston, which has oh. its own special accent, to California, which yeah. has its own, but and, and then back to Boston. So I think uh, I just kind of shook it out yeah. by going to Boston. <laughs> Places with weird accents. <laughs> it was like breadcrumbs. You just kept leaving pieces in different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looked like from your profile that you were actually be tagged to do a mission. Yeah, let's see. Um, this is actually in the in the shuttle years. There was a lot more spe uh, specialization. Um, a shuttle mission was about a week or two, and so. I, you, you would train for a couple years for this one to two week mission. And so NASA would tend to have things like payload specialists that would focus on one payload for the whole mission or somebody that's going to do EVA, so spacewalking. And they were trained up to be good at that one thing. Um, that has changed. So now that we're going to the International Space Station, that's our primary right now. Um, everyone flying in space is going to the International Space Station. It's a six month mission. So you have to be ready for everything. You have to be ready to go outside on a spacewalk, to um, operate scientific payloads, to cut up, uh, you know, um, to work on science experiments. Um, you have to be ready to fix the toilet when it breaks, do maintenance. So you have to be ready for everything. Other than the highlight of your career of being on Jagging Around with Sean yeah, and Rachel, clearly. what do you do every day? Like you get up in the morning and you do this that what what does that look like every day yeah it, every day is different that's one of the best parts of the job it really is uh it's so varied so um big picture we are we're always training so even after the initial training uh we're we're staying current on all the various types of training that we do um, so that we're ready um, when we do get assigned to a mission to go fly. So that training is everything from flying in our T-38 uh, jet trainers to uh, doing spacewalk training in the neutral buoyancy lab down here. It's a big, huge swimming pool with a uh, full-scale International Space Station uh, underwater. So we do spacewalk training in there. Uh, we do Russian language. We keep current on um, the systems of International Space Station. Uh, we sometimes go out and do geology training. So there's this whole training aspect. Another big part of the job is, you know, before you get assigned, you have a ground job. So like right now um, I'm assigned, I'm the uh, astronaut office increment lead for uh, the current space station expedition. Um, and so that's sort of a more operational, the current real time operations on the space station. I'm really tied in with that. I'm doing a lot of shifts in mission control to support that. Um, so we're always sort of supporting, whether it's um, the current operations uh, on ISS or developing future hardware for things like the Artemis missions to the moon. Um, there's this aspect of kind of supporting all the things we're doing right now at NASA. Um, and so with, with all of that stuff going on, every day is just wildly different, but always fun and exciting. When you say training, you're talking physical and mental, right? I mean, this is something that, that you really have to be disciplined to, to really go through it. Yeah, I think all of the different aspects of our training, we have, it's hard to um, simulate actually being in space. And so all the different types of training we do sort of help us to simulate and prepare for different aspects sure. of that. We can't tell you how much we appreciate this. And thanks to Christine Kretz, who's a LinkedIn friend, former paramedic partner, 
and uh, who connected us to Chelsea, who connected us to you. And we really appreciate it. Any, uh, want to say hi to everybody as this video goes up to give a shout out to the school friends, anybody? Yeah, school friends from NA and my brother, uh, still in Pittsburgh teaching chemistry. Uh, yeah, go Steelers next year. <laughs> Who didn't know that was coming? <laughs>